The next category is technical skills. The first behavior is uses patient identifiers. In each of um, the medications, for all medications and procedures, I feel that two identifiers are important. You know, this has been something that we've expected in all the SIMS as well as in the clinical area. Mm -hmm. So to me, it's you know something that we use for safety. You know, I, mm -hmm. I don't know if. So looking at the armband and asking the patient the date of birth, um, do we want that before medications and procedures, just medications? I think for anything, okay. um, you know, before they put in the Foley, before they start, start the um, uh, IV medications, before they, you know, do anything with the patient, even the nebulizer would be important. Okay, and I think typically when our respiratory therapist comes in, they do some of the, mm -hmm. they do the patient identifiers, um, which is an advantage and a disadvantage. Sometimes it cues them if they've been forgetting. Mm -hmm. So if they've done every single one and they forget one, do mm -hmm. they not get the point? I think they have to have at mm -hmm. least two. Yeah, for it, each, but oh, they have each. to do it any time they give something. Mm -hmm. I think, yes. yes. Okay, I agree too. I just wanted to make sure we were on the same page mm -hmm. there. So um, I will. That's a safety. Yeah, I agree. So two patient identifiers before all medications, IV fluids, and procedures. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's see. The next behavior is utilize as standard precautions, including hand washing. And I'm thinking for that one, it's just basically hand washing before and after all patient contacts. Mm -hmm. And I'm also thinking um, gloves. And I'm not thinking sterile at this point, you know, but just gloves if it's appropriate. So if they should have gloves on there helping them with the bathroom, any type of contact of body fluid that they should have gloves on and not just pretend to put gloves on. I think yeah. that's important that they okay. actually apply the gloves if it's necessary rather than just say I'm putting on gloves. Yeah, we have the box of gloves in the mm -hmm. room. I yes. want them to physically yeah. put Because that's physically part of realism too. Yes, exactly. Okay, and then hand washing. And it's okay if they use the or the, the gel, sanitizer. the sanitizer mm -hmm. on gloves. Okay, what's next here? Um, the next is administration of medication safety. Um, as far as the five rights, those are going to be important. In the fundamentals book, they also talk about the sixth right of documentation, but we have decided not to do the documentation, so should we follow suit with that and just stick to the major five rights? I think, and I so. think that would be a good way to bring up documentation in, po in the debriefing, the post-conferencing, is um, to bring up that that is a, a sixth right and that um, that is something that would be expected of them as a part of that documentation uh, piece, even though we don't count it as part of their points for mm -hmm. this. What about the piece as far as the five rights, you know, one of those being the right dose? Sometimes we have dosage calculations included, and in this sim, mm -hmm. we do. We do. What do you think about having each of the students do the dosage calculations so that we can evaluate not just the two nursing students, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the ones that are playing the nurse, but also the knowledge of the family and the patient. Yeah, and I do usually do that anyways. Okay. I usually have the, the, pa the student playing the patient I'll say here, go ahead and calculate and tell me what, what you would give and we'll see if they're on the right track. And also okay. the family members mm -hmm. as an aside, because that way everyone's involved. I think that's important. You know, I also, I want to add to that that I think we also need to talk about um, using um, the rate, like how fast should they give the medication? Mm -hmm. Like in this scenario, we're giving LASIK, so how fast should they push the LASIK? Mm -hmm. What should the concentration be? Do they need to dilute it? Is it compatible with the IV fluid? Um, those mm. sorts of things as well. I think that's just as important as the five rights or six rights. I agree. I think those, those would need to be met in order for them to receive the point. Yeah. Okay. What if we can't see them? Is um, how, how much they're actually drawing up or if they check the compatibility, how else can we actually assess that should we have the patient ask, the family member ask, how much that. are you giving if they mm -hmm. don't say and we can't see it well? Well, we could tell them up front maybe to announce, I'm going to be giving 40 milligrams of Lasix and, and that's 40 milligrams okay. in four mils. I'm going to give this over 
four minutes or whatever, and maybe they'll forget to, and if they forget, which is an honest mm -hmm. mistake, then we could cue them or even ask them in the in post conference. Because we try to zoom in with our cameras and everything, but we can't always mm -hmm. catch it. everything. So mm -hmm. um, we can always, too, like you said, have the patient say, oh, what is that? Well, and that how looks much like are you a lot. How much are you giving me? Oh, I don't, I don't usually give that much or something like that. Mm -hmm. Kind of mm -hmm. prompt in that way. What do you think about that? I think that'd be good. Okay, so I will put um, the five rights and, and then also the rate, how fast they get the Lasix, knowing the concentration, checking for compatibilities. And the dosage calculation. And the dose calculation by all. Mm -hmm. Okay. And a note to ourselves to kind of prompt them to do that at the beginning. And okay. hopefully that will help um, with some of that. Okay. okay. Got that one. The next behavior is manages equipment, tubes, and drains therapeutically. Um, in looking at that, you know, that to me is pretty st straightforward. You know, do they wipe the IV site before they give the Lasix as an example? Um, do they, you know, wipe before they connect um, to the lock? Um, you know, do they put the pump or uh, calculate, put the correct numbers into the pump? those mm -hmm. types of things. Yeah, I think also priming the tubing mm -hmm. when they Good get point. when they do that IV fluid, making sure they have that primed ahead of time, um, making sure they flush after they give the Lasix, uh, using chloroprep to, um, to wipe their access sites before they use them, since that's one of the newer protocols mm -hmm. that we've and once they see. put in the Foley, too, not bringing it way above the bladder, those types oh, yeah. of things. Yeah. It's okay. part of management. Yeah. 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 So, I agree. Okay, so not only I'll put the correct IV access utilization, but I'll do um, correct use of pump and tubing and correct um, handling of Foley catheter mm -hmm. drainage system. Good. Okay, but that's below the, the level of the body and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, not bad. All right, and the final objective is that they perform procedures correctly. And I think our main procedure here is the Foley catheter insertion. Mm -hmm. And I think as long as they follow, follow the steps um, for the protocol for Foley catheter insertion and they maintain sterility, I don't care if they have to change their gloves three times because they contaminate it. As long as they recognize when they contaminate, they change their mm -hmm. gloves and they do it correctly, they mm -hmm. get the point for that. What do you think about timing? Do we need to limit them as far as the amount of time we allot for the, because I know sometimes a skill can take quite a bit of time out of the simulation. Do you think, do you want to put a limit on it for them to get the point or? I, I don't think that that's really necessary. I think no, make sure that they keep sterility is the most important thing. Okay. Um, if it would be so long that it would be embarrassing the student, we may have to put some limits, but overall I don't think it's necessary. Yeah. The, so the priority is correct technique, sterile technique. And mm -hmm. I think then we can give them some feedback at the end and give them ideas. Maybe they didn't have everything ahead, ahead of time ready, mm -hmm. they didn't have, you know, didn't use their overhead bed table, things like that that could make them be more efficient that they just haven't learned yet. Um, and we can use that as a, a teaching moment, but mm -hmm. I don't think we have to take off a point for that as long as they've done everything correctly and figured that out. Okay. I agree. Okay, so I'll Good. put that. All right, well what I'm going to do now is I, I kind of kept track of everything that we discussed. I will go um, type this up into our format and I will email it to you guys and you can let me know if I've missed anything and otherwise we will be ready for simulation. Great. Thank you.